Okay, characters. Um, if I look a little rough around the edges here, uh, I was a grandma for three days taking care of two little boys, uh, one three and one almost two. Um, so, uh, you know, when you're 67 and chasing around little people, uh, it, it can make you look your age. So, <laughs> this is Fundamentals of Therapeutic Massage, extra uh, guidelines and study helps. Um, and we are, we just finished chapter eight and we are going to work on chapter nine. So we're in unit three. And unit three in Fundamentals of Therapeutic Massage is the do it unit. This is where you're gonna learn how to do uh, body mechanics and the various massage strokes and how to drape and how to bolster and um, it'll finish up at the very end. So chapter eight, chapter nine, chapter 10, chapter 11. Chapter 11 will be the one where uh, we start uh, working with these skills, these do it skills uh, intelligently using critical thinking, which we have explored uh, in units one and two. So um, units one and two are the know it units, uh, the concepts, the facts, the um, data, data collection, how to learn how to critical think, uh, what the research is, indications, contraindications, safety, sanitation. And then um, the unit three, and then again on unit four is the uh, putting it all together so especially unit four so we're right in the middle of the learning how to do it phase so I'm going to share my screen I'm almost figuring out how to do that and the first thing I want to do is go to um, your canvas site and show you um, and remind you about uh, the resources here. So I want to remind you that there are many high quality uh, animations here uh, that cross over into your essential sciences and they are um, supportive uh, in relationship to all of the videos YouTube videos that I have posted for you in our fun little guest speaker uh, series for each of the chapters of essential science. Just randomly continue to look through these. Let them play in the background. Um, turn the sound down and, and try to narrate it yourself. So there's a lot of ways to use these. I also want to remind you about the body spectrum coloring book. Um, and so you want to use all of those resources there for novel repetition. And this is very helpful with um, reinforcing uh, the anatomy. And then I also want to uh, remind you to continue to look at the rubric here um that will continue to show you what your progression should be i want to remind you that there are eight practice exams um, for the mblex and the two textbooks fundamentals and essential science it's about learning to be a great massage therapist but it's also your main point for preparation for the uh, licensing exam. And then it'll go into its various chapters. Uh, and when we get down into chapter eight, uh, which we did before at the bottom of this, um, that is where you would see, you have to click on it. Um, 
and bring it down and all this stuff opens up for you and you're going to start to see videos and you want to make sure you watch these in addition um, there on the youtube channel there are playlists related to body mechanics so um, there's an expectation that you have utilized these resources and then when we get into chapter nine which is our focus today um, then there are many videos here related to draping and bolstering etc let's click on that open in a new window and we've got draping materials here and positioning and draping so let's look at the positioning and draping i don't have the feature on where you can hear it um, i just want you to be able to see and um, get a sense of this and i'm going to fast forward it somewhere i'm going to do there it is um, we can make the screen bigger here and now it's my expectation that you're going to practice 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 this um and even if you don't have a massage table right now uh, you can um, still practice this like even on a, on the floor okay so um, this is this is how you're going to reinforce this and we will um obviously be practicing this in class um but it's still upon you to know that these resources are here and then there are also resources available on the youtube channel so uh, that's where you're finding these videos so you should know where that is at okay um as a reminder here's your chapter test here are some quizzes for you this is a review strategy um and then here are the answers to the end of chapter uh, questions for review okay so let's get out of that and open up our page first and let's get into the um, chapter nine so now in these do it chapters um, the videos are doing a lot of the pre-preparation and the support it's it's not there's lecture here there's didactic or content that you need to know certainly um, but it's not like when we were looking at business practices or ethics and professionalism where most of the delivery has to do with um, our um, talking about something and looking stuff up and learning how to use a, a uh, thought process that helps us organize uh, scheduling or um, so when we do these videos here it's much more about me uh, highlighting a little bit here so that you can uh, better utilize the textbook chapter so as always you look at your table of contents and uh, remember that these are pre organized into about five minute or five minute 15 minute reading learning segments so uh, we got equipment we've got our environment um, we have uh, 
our first introduction into a new client, communication related to getting feedback from them, what happens before the massage, what happens after the massage, and then detailed uh, figures and commentary supported by the videos on positioning and draping of the client. All right, chapter objectives, key terms, a little bit of overview here. Um, and you can um, start to get a sense of how the book is scaffold or wraps into itself here. So equipment, this is always a big thing with client, uh, uh, with students. Uh, and we have uh, a couple of goals here. We're looking at what equipment to purchase and then how to, how to take care of it. So um, remember you are a piece of equipment. You use your hands and your forearms and in some instances your feet. And this is where the body mechanics comes in. Um, and then there's a massage table, uh, which is standard. And, I, and you can get affordable massage tables. Um, you can go to massage warehouse or you can uh, look on Amazon um, and you um, don't need to spend a ton of money for this first massage table. You can get something for that, that will work really well from between $150 and $300 here. And the sooner you get this, the better. And this was in part of our orientation videos as well about what to look for there. Um, so if you look at the various features here, this is what we're um, looking for in order for us to work efficiently and keep the equipment uh, sanitized. So there's portable tables, which is this is pretty standard um, and this is what you're likely going to get. Now, when you really get settled and know where you're at or when you look to um, at where you might be employed, then you're going to want to either they should have uh, the hydraulic tables for you or you might want to um, invest in this in your own location, but the hydraulic tables don't move around. So you still need one of these that in case you want to um, take your table and do a, some sort of massage on site. So these are the, the features you're going to look for. And a massage chair is nice. Um, it's hard for body mechanics. Um, but it's a good promotional thing. And if you come across one, sometimes you can look on Craigslist or something like that and they'll, they'll have these that are used that you can purchase. Um, the, sometimes the, uh, the various table manufacturers will have a um, package that will have a table and a chair that goes with it. And when we get into the next chapter, we'll look at how to adapt to that. And then you do want to be proficient on a mat because you can always rig up a mat, which is essentially working on the floor. Um, and so we will be showing you how to do that. But it's uh, even if you just uh, have a couple of um, sleeping bags down uh, so that people can lay down on the floor and you, know, you can work from that vantage. So here are some pictures. This happens to be a variation on the chair massage where it's a, just the upper part that clicks to the table. So this goes through and it's got key features, advantages, disadvantages. This happens to be the mat, but it was, it's 
there for all the other equipment. So here's a mat set up. Uh, and I've worked a lot on a mat uh, over the years. And um, so in some situations, it's the preferred method. Um, and easy, easy to organize and pull together. And then here are, are all the variety of bolsters and you're going to want um, one that is a large flat square. Uh, and we did show you that in the draping and bolstering video um, for YouTube that will look at this. Uh, especially for sideline. And you have to consider all of the, um, you know, how you're going to sanitize this, all the different um, pieces of draping, uh, how you're going to carry them if you're mobile. Um, and this gives you a little, these pictures right here give you um, kind of a broad setup and you can just follow through and see how this goes. And then the videos help a lot. Now, as far as draping materials are concerned, here at Health Enrichment Center, you're going to use standard bed linens. Um, and uh, we use a, we teach you to use a twin fitted sheet uh, on the table to protect the table. Um, and it acts as a secondary uh, sanitary, sanitary cover for the table as well. Um, then two flat sheets. Um, I like, uh, you can use twin or full. I like to have a full sheet on the bottom because when we get into the draping, you're going to see you're going to fold that uh, bottom sheet up over the top uh, to for uh, secure draping. And then a you can use a twin on the top, but it's nice to have a full sheet too. Some people are larger and um, the additional fabric in a full sheet is helpful. The um, um, queen or king obviously are too big. So, um, and they gotta be laundered a lot. And so cotton, cotton blend, uh, I've used flannel a lot. It has a kind of a comforting feel to it. Um, and here at the school, when you're practicing, you will lay on your own sheets. However, your partner who's practicing with you has got to touch those sheets. So you always have to remember to use the proper laundering with them and bring them to class clean each time. Uh, so here's a list here. Um, and it does say here two full or twin sheets, uh, at least one pillowcase, probably two is better, um, a bath size towel and a flannel sheet or light blanket or something like that is a, because people do get chilled. Then the next piece of equipment that we need to look at are lubricants. And the purpose of a lubricant is to reduce friction on the skin so you can get a slide glide. Not all methods require the use of lubricant. In fact, most don't. The ones that, uh, most the, the kind of uh, approach that uses the lubricant the most is the gliding where we are moving along the surface of the skin. And there are different kinds. Um, at the school, we're gonna use a, either a biotone cream or a biotone lotion. And that's because then we know if there's an allergic reaction. Um, there are other brands that do just fine. And we have to learn to dispense those in a sanitary fashion. So um, we will be uh, looking at how to use the appropriate amount, not too much. Uh, start out with less and then add a little more if you need it generally. 
then, you know, music is helpful. It modulates um, the, uh, the environment. It can act as a timing mechanism because you all know where you are based on the song. It can act as a white noise. Um, so um, it, it does affect the physiology. So um, there is a little bit of overview on that. So this is, this is your basic equipment, all right? Then we're gonna look at your environment. This is the room you work in and, and the air quality around it, and that sort of thing. And, and how to, how to um, design a, an optimal environment and, the, and then what to do to adapt in less than optimal situations. So these are the things you need to consider. Um, room temperature, you need to be able to modulate that temperature in that room. If you don't have an actual thermostat, you might have to use a secondary heater. In these days now with uh, how virus uh, or pathogens can be spread in the air, uh, we do want to have as much fresh air and ventilation as possible. Ideally, you would have two windows in the room that can open um, or you're using a window and a fan. Um, so uh, this has uh, become more important. And you wanna make sure that the heating air conditioning unit supports good ventilation. In an area, um, sometimes the a private massage office is, needs to be divided into two distinct areas and you can use a screen um, or uh, sometimes there's um, like a curtain can be suspended so that there's a where a place where the client can uh, disrobe and comfortably get onto the table and restrooms access to restrooms is really really important so if you were going to have the ideal uh, private office think of a hotel room and how it is set up there's a little entryway Usually you go off to the side and there's a bathroom access and then across from that is closet. And then the room is divided kind of into um, a seating area. Maybe there's a desk there, that sort of thing. That would be the business area. And then where the bed is at would be where your massage table is at. So th think about that when you're looking for a private office. Many times a designated or private restroom isn't available. Uh, it'll be shared restrooms. Um, and so, uh, I mean, that's not impossible, but think about what it's like for a client to have to use the restroom halfway through the massage and then not easily be able to get to it. So you might have to have some robes or something like that. Uh, lighting, you want to make sure that you're not working in the dark, but you also can do something other than harsh overhead lighting. Be very careful about any kind of uh, diffuser, uh, flowers, plants, that sort of thing. Some people are very allergic to that, and it does linger from one session to the other. Same with you. You want to make sure that you're clean you don't have a lot of chemicals on you and that your hands are warm. Sometimes people will use a warm towel um, at the beginning of the massage, whether they're you know, putting it over the, the person's back for a little bit or starting on their feet with a warm towel, but it also warms the person's hands. Um, wash your hands under warm water. Uh, there's nothing more shocking than cold hands. Here's a little schematic on a um, little uh, private office kind of a thing. Um, and look at that. And you, you really need, the smallest you can really function in is 10 by 10, and that's small. 
Um, 10 by 11, 10 by 12 is better. Um, you need to be able to move efficiently. There should be three feet all the way around that massage table, ideally. So this goes into explaining how you would set those rooms up. And uh, here's one that's one big room with a restroom using a divider. Uh, and this is your typical setup in a, a franchise location, um, which is a common employer. And usually uh, these uh, spaces that are rent are 20 foot wide by 60 foot long. That's a standard commercial rental space. And so it does limit how the room can be set up. A hall has to be a certain width in order for it to accommodate uh, wheelchairs and code. Um, and so this just gives you a little idea here. Uh, when I laid this out, um, the uh, rooms are about 11 feet. The couple's room is bigger. And, but they're narrower. The best I could do on this was like, uh, especially for a couple of the rooms was eight and a half feet. So you'd have to put your table on an angle in here in order for that to work. So, and it does lend itself, massage does lend itself to home office. Um, best if you have uh, designated access, you do need to work with your zoning to make sure that that's allowed. And, um, you typically do not want clients wandering through your house. So make sure you read through this uh, and the advantages and limitations to that. And then it talks about on-site massage, like a sports massage event or something like that and how you would do a setup there. And then mobile, going to people's homes, that's also viable. And I've done that for a large part of my career. And you sort of create a space that's the massage space. And, and you know, you have to get creative here. And this will give you some ideas about adapting to that. Uh, interestingly, during the pandemic, a lot of people adapted to providing massage outside because it was actually uh, safer. Uh, it was, there was less chance of spread. So here's, you know, just some pictures on that. Um, all right, now, when you are working with a new client, so the content in this, this section has to do with how do you orient a first time client? And then you might need to remind that client about the, the expectations and the procedures three, four times. And then after that, they're, they're gonna know what to do. Um, but you can have some uncomfortable situations with a new client if you're not very deliberate with this. And sometimes they will, uh, you'll have a, a regulation that a client comes a half hour early in order to kind of get oriented to what's going on. And I'm gonna tell you too, once you get your area set, don't change it around too much. Um, clients and you become habituated to um, the direction of the table and where you're, how you access, where you set your lotion and all of that. So, um, and they, they like familiarity. So, so don't be changing stuff around too much. Um, so the, this part here is going to be giving you actual scripts on how you uh, would orient a brand new client for massage therapy. And um, you know, of course, you already know, read your focus on professionalisms to get the overlap on what's going on. So um, there are many things to consider here with a brand new client. Uh, we have to 
certainly make sure we clearly disclose the rules and regulations and the fees, uh, as uh, you learned in previous chapters, a brochure um, website is very helpful with that. But you can't depend on clients knowing. Uh, so you still have to talk with them about it and reinforce that. Um, you want to try to determine what outcomes these client a client wants so that you can frame it into um, the four categories of care and the four main outcomes and how that's going to wrap together. You do need to be concerned um, about setting solid regulations about draping and sanitation and potentially mask wearing and all that and, and you just very matter of fact about it it is what it is there's there's just no argument about it here here's what you do most people are compliant and if they're not compliant then you probably don't need them as a client because if they're going to give you trouble over something like this they're also gonna give you trouble over other things. So at that point, it's better to just say, um, I really don't think that uh, the way I am conducting my business or the way we provide massage here is gonna be the best fit for you. Here are some other uh, massage businesses or massage therapists you might wanna check out. Certainly don't refuse or refer if somebody is trying to sexualize the massage. Then we also have to think about uh, gender, the gender continuum, um, age concerns from ch children all the way up to people that are um, very mature. Uh, do they need a stool? Are they going to need help? Do I need to adapt to working over clothing? It's nice to be able to work over clothing with kids. Um, and so, um, you, these points, these bullet points here, that don't discount these. Um, body image is a big deal, for example. So slow down and um, take a look at this. Sometimes people will prefer one gender over another. Uh, sometimes there are cultural or religious determinants of uh, whether a person can get a massage from um, the opposite gender. So, and then also be aware that a lot of people um, have different gender identities with themselves and that we want to be respectful with that. And so you just ask, just ask uh, so that you can be respectful. So, the other thing you need to be able to do is to get these clients to give you information back so that you can adapt. So many times I will, you know, because we, the, our family owns a spa and I might get a person that says, well, I wish they would have, you, they used too much pressure, or they didn't use enough pressure, or my feet were cold. And I will say, did you tell the therapist that? No. Well, how are they supposed to know? So you need to really educate your client so that they know you need this feedback and you're not going to take offense. And when a client does give you feedback, regardless of, of maybe the sharpness or the harshness or, or whatever with it, you cannot get your feelings hurt over that. You adapt and you adjust. And if you cannot adapt and adjust to that particular client, maybe they, they want more pressure that you, that you comfortably can deliver or um, they, are, they, they want you to work with them on a mat and you have maybe a knee issue that prevents you from doing that. Then you refer to another massage therapist. So you have to extract that feedback. Um, always read your mentoring tips uh, and I'm going to tell you that one of the biggest complaints that clients have is the therapist talks too much so don't ignore direct 
questions and stuff from the client, but don't engage in uh, or encourage education that is other than massage therapy. Now, if a client wants to talk, you can listen, but they don't, they really do not want to hear about you. So keep your mouth shut and your hands moving and respond appropriately to direct inquiries. And then when you do talk to the client, it should be in relationship to what you're uh, looking for and accomplishing with the massage. Keep your mouth shut a lot. Okay. Um, so here are some examples of when we might want to uh, give some feedback to the client. Um, did you notice that they have, you have a bruise back here or something like that? Um, so this, this box gives you some direct bullets. Um, sometimes people need a script and, and that's what this does, <coughs> is <coughs> gives you an exact script here. And what I suggest you do with these is role play back and forth. And, and use a family member. Um, and uh, kids are great because they'll they'll tell you, you know. So if you have a teenager or something around, you know, use them to practice with. Um, all right. So here's um, again more of this questioning to establish these relationships with your clients here and how to give them feedback. Uh, make sure that it, the feedback you give, the conversation you have is about the massage. All right, so this is really important here. Make sure you stop and read this example. And then you have to be very, very, very honest with yourself on how you're going to fall into uh, communication snafus with people. It's usually because you don't stay on task. Um, and in the beginning, you're probably going to ask too many questions like, are you still comfortable? Are you warm? You'll get the idea after a while uh, about what's the right amount there. That'll take some practice. So setting up and closing out a massage that's what this is and here is a very detailed orientation process so do that practice this um, and you can role play it when you're in class or you can use a family member or a friend and you want to get to the point where this is a version of this is pretty memorized. Um, and you're gonna have to add in here too, um, focus on the sanitation procedures, like please don't touch anything other than what you have to touch, or uh, yes, we are gonna wear a mask, or here's where the restroom is, and just a reminder on how to wash your hands. So, um, this is gonna go on and tell you how to end the session, how to get the client off the table, and then how to close it and saying goodbye. This is very, it's almost like a, a habituation to a ritual. The client comes in, they uh, update their, well, for a first time client, they complete their initial intake, they are shown you know, through the facility, they, uh, are reminded about the rules, then every time they come back, that's repeated. They go into the massage area. You remind them how to lay, uh, lay down on the massage table. You tell, don't say, please remove your clothing to your comfort level. That is very confusing. Tell them what, to, what they have to leave on and tell them you can leave on more than that. But, you, you know, and, and our rule is they have to leave on the lower underwear. Um, and 
show them multiple times where to put their clothing because they tend to throw them on the floor. I, I don't know why that is, but uh, in our clinic areas, some of the rooms have a place to hang the clothing and some, some don't, but there are little tables in there that they, or a chair that they can put their clothing on. And then don't change up the sequence of the, the massage is different every single time but don't change up the flow a whole lot once you get that down. Cause again, that that's a, can be a little jarring. And then when it's time for them to go, make sure you have a leaving process as well. Otherwise they'll stay and talk, uh, some will. And if you've got a reception area, it helps. But when you're by yourself, uh, it's hard for that client to transition. Uh, they have to be helped to transition into the massage and then to transition out. Okay, and then the, after the client's left, that's when you take care of your documentation. And if you have to do all your documentation at the end of the day, then make sure you jot down notes so that you can be accurate with that. Now this next section, uh, is pretty self-explanatory, especially when you compare it against uh, the videos I showed you on Canvas plus the YouTube channel videos and um, the illustrations that are here in the textbook. So this is just practice, 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 because what you don't want to do is interfere with the massage because you're clumsy with the draping and the bolstering. So uh, very detailed pictures. Uh, you can use these to remind yourself of what's going on. They mirror pretty good uh, the uh, videos and the YouTube. And you know, you just, here's the narrative under here. Um, and so we want to make sure that we're very respectful of our clients, um, that they are modestly draped, that they are warm, um, that we don't, um, you know, inadvertently um, expose the client. And if you do, if there is a draping snafu, make sure you acknowledge it right away. Um, excuse me when you turned over the, the sheet slipped just a little bit. I apologize. Um, I'm going to chart this so that we know that it happened. Um, and it's certainly not going to happen again. And so, you know, don't try to hide that there has been an adverse draping event. Okay, so you know now where all of your resources are for Evolve, and you know how to work through these questions. Um, so it appears in here that we actually have the questions posted. Um, I'm going to have to look closer at that. Uh, that might be kind of fun. <laughs> That's new to me. So um, I will uh, certainly take a look at that. But if they are there, that's okay. Usually these are on Evolve. Um, so it looks like there may have been a little printing issue, but better to have more information than not enough. All right. Um, you all uh, practice your draping a lot so that it's habituated. Uh, okay, next chapter is the do it chapter for massage. And that again um, is going to rely on the classroom teaching, uh, a lot of hands-on practice and support by using the videos.